Hi, I'm Father Austin Murphy. I'm the Catholic campus chaplain here at Towson University in Baltimore, Maryland, and the director of the Newman Center here. This coming year, Pope Benedict XVI has declared this year the year of the priest. And I'm, frankly, I'm a little biased toward that, and I'm really appreciative of it. But this is a year in which we can actually focus on the priesthood as a vocation, but also on the countless numbers of men who have served us in the priesthood and who continue to serve us in the priesthood. When I think of the Catholic priesthood, particularly in my own life, one of the priests that mainly comes to mind is a man who was my pastor up until I was 24 years old, the only pastor I ever knew growing up. His name was Monsignor Francis W. Fortinball, but everyone who knew him knew him as Footsie. And I think that came from a time when he was in the seminary and he was quite a good soccer player, so Footsie became his name there, and Footsie stuck with him till the day he died. Um, Monsignor Fortinball was an interesting character. He was one of those uh, priests who everybody knew, and either when you heard his name, everyone said, oh, or oh. Uh, either you loved him or you hated him. And um, part of that was because uh, Monsignor never really had what you would call tact. Uh, he would yell across a, cat, uh, a crowded uh, supermarket, I have not seen you in church lately. Get there. However, one-on-one, -on -one, I found him to be one of the most human priests I've ever met. He did not change. He did not become someone else. He simply allowed his humanity to shine through. And that was particularly uh, evident to me, as I remember now, uh, during a funeral. When I was an altar server, we went forth to meet the casket as the deceased was being brought into the church. And behind the casket was this woman's, this, this dead woman's um, widower. And he was an elderly gentleman, and he was absolutely devastated. He was crying, blubbering over the loss of his wife, really looked lost. And as I stood there next to Footsie, as he received the body, I heard him very quietly say, aw, his heart was moved with pity. Perhaps in the same way that Jesus' heart was moved with pity, when he saw people suffering, when he saw people looking for someone to connect them with God. And I knew that Footsie really did care. He cared about each and every one of his parishioners, even when he was yelling across a crowded supermarket, get yourself to church. As I was getting ready to be ordained a deacon, I got a phone call one afternoon from Footsie from the nursing home where he was um, living at the end of his life. And it was out of the blue, I was surprised, and he said, Austin. He said, yes. I said, yes, Monsignor. He said, I want you to have my chalice. And I was floored. I said, really? Well, thank you. And he said, have you seen it? I said, Monsignor, I served countless masses with you. I remember your chalice. He said, well, it's really beautiful, and I think you should have it, because you're the pride of St. Agnes. He was very proud to have a vocation coming from his own, own parish, and he, I believe, in his own ego, also believed he had a lot to do with it. He was right. I received his chalice when I was ordained a deacon, and this is it. And it really is beautiful and ornate, but what's most beautiful about it, I think, is the now over 60 years, almost 70 years now, of the precious blood of Christ being confected within it. Nothing makes this chalice any more special than that. It could be simply made out of rocks, but because the blood of Christ is inside of it, or has been inside of it for years and years, it's very special to me. On the bottom of the chalice, uh, we find Monsignor's name and his date of ordination, June 12, 1947. Um, it was a gift to him from his mother and father. It says, from mother and dad. And then in Latin, there's an inscription, which means in English, they gave to God a priest, and he has blessed them forever. What a wonderful uh, testimony to parents bringing up a, a young man to become a priest, and then the blessing that they and countless other people, including myself, received through that gift. Next to it, now, is my name, T. Austin Murphy, ordained May 24, 2003. There doesn't need to be anything else on that. My parents gave God a priest, and I believe he has blessed them forever as well. And hopefully, in my own imitation of Footsie's humanity and his caring compassion for each and every person entrusted to him, 
I will be a blessing to others. There's also room for one more. And I hope one day to be able to say to someone, calling them up out of the blue, I want you to have my chalice. I want to pass this on to you. The fact that I had it doesn't make it any more special. But the fact that Jesus is present and has physically touched this chalice for years and years and years and touched other people through this chalice will make it more special than anything. So, Footsy, I thank you for the gift of your priesthood. I thank you for your example of just basic humanity in your priesthood. And I thank you for being an example to me and to countless others. I hope that God blesses you. And in this year of the priest, I hope that God blesses each and every one of my brother priests and all of those considering the priesthood. Amen. Amen.